today with Manuel, the president of Showcase Pianos. And today we are going to be playing a piano that is worth more than a house, more than an actual castle. <laughs> But we're going to be looking at a few other panels before we get there. And so the first panel we're going to look at would be comparable to a luxury vacation to Mexico. So let's go take a look. Okay, so we're beginning with the Vivo H10 by Dexibel. So I've actually played on this piano. I have it at the office and I love it. So Manuel, can you just tell us a quick little bit about what makes this piano so special? One thing that I like about them is that they're made by hand in Italy and they use the same sounds from the Fazioli piano. So they, they have Fazioli sound samples, they also have C. Beckstein sound samples, it's the German piano inside there. Then there's Playel from France, so there's it's this French piano, and then the American piano, the Steinway, of course, is in there. Uh, they have great samples, and it sounds really, really awesome. And it has the nice wooden keys; it feels great. It's a lot of great pianos all in inside this little piano. Grotrian, which is a brand I've never heard of, but it looks beautiful, and I'm excited for Manuel to tell us a little bit about what makes this special. So Grotrian is one of the most historic brands in the world. It was founded in 1835, so that means it's before Steinway, before Beckstein, uh, before many of the brands that we, you know, we know. They were only making the, the, the ones completely made in Germany, but then the company was bought by this huge company in China, and they decided to introduce more entry-level lines where they were all made with German parts, but they were assembled in China. And they are fantastic. We're blown away by these pianos. They sound and feel great, and they are at a very reasonable level for, for a piano. So they have like German hammers, like the Renner hammers, which is one of the most famous hammer makers in the world. Klug keyboard has that, now I'm just reading it off here, but it's, just, it's all written here. They're all German, you know, all German uh, makers that put the components in there. That's amazing. So this piano would be probably like on par to a vacation destination, like maybe Bora Bora. Or a luxury cruise. Or a luxury cruise. Okay, so I wanna, I wanna play this. It's so much different. So, it's beautiful, but it's a very different experience than playing on an electric piano. I haven't played on an acoustic, a true acoustic, other than the terrible one I have at home in a long time. So, for me... It's just, I'm just, I feel like it gets a little bit muddier down here, but it feels nice under the fingers, so it's like this. So that's California Walnut. Uh, sorry, no, I got that wrong. <gasps> Cut that out. Okay, next up we have the Beckstein. Did I say that right? You cut it. Yes! Beckstein. Okay, so this one's kind of like comparable to a cottage. Like, you're not going on vacation now, you have the vacation. Why is this one so special other than that looks really pretty? Well, these are made by hand in Germany, and it's also a very historic brand. It's been around since 1853, in, in fact, the same year the Steinway was founded. And uh, they, they are excellent pianos. They're uh, one of the best sellers coming from Germany, and people love them. People love that nice, broad tone. Probably the best upright being made in the world today, but it's like, yeah, it's a few bucks. But Just it's <laughs> it's really nice, you know. Yeah. So I don't know, I think like the different pianos kind of have like a, they all have their own voice, the different, piano brands, right? So I think this is a, you know, a nice broad tone. It just sounds beautiful. Sounds beautiful. I cannot wait to play it. Okay, I think I'm just gonna love them all. Uh, but this one definitely is one I'd like to spend some time with. I just got lost in my sentence in the playing for a second there because that's how lovely it is. It's feels um brighter than the other one. It's probably because it's grand and not an acoustic so there is some differences there and the lid is open a little bit. I'm in my happy place. Okay friends, we are now looking 
at, not the final piano, but a pretty amazing piano. We have here a Fazioli, which I said correctly? You said it right, yes. Yes! <laughs> uh, so tell us about this piano. Yeah. A little bit about the Fazioli brand is that it, it's kind of like the, the baby or the new kid on the block in the piano world. Mm. So it was found, founded in 1979 by Mr. Fazioli, a, a pianist who's also an engineer. And, oh my gosh. Yeah, and he wanted to like take things apart and see how they work and he, he thought, you know, he could build a better piano. I'm in dreamland a little bit yeah. about it. It's yeah. beautiful. Like just like inside is beautiful, yeah. outside is beautiful. Everything is so yeah. beautiful. I can't wait to play it. So this would be like um I think we're buying an apartment yeah, now. Yeah, it's a small apartment. This is worth a this is worth a small apartment. Yeah, Mr. Fazioli wants the pianist to be inspired by the beauty of the piano as well. So he makes sure to finish it very, very well. So every detail of the piano is, is done to perfection and uses the, like, and there's so many details that I can show you about the piano that is different from any other piano maker in the world. But I could really talk about all, all day about these pianos. Like, you love uh, them. Yes, uh, and I love his dedication to perfection, his dedication to quality and uh, that's how he stands out as, as being different. And all the other makers have felt the pressure that he's brought to the, to the piano world, a pressure to improve themselves as well. So I see, uh, slowly I see other makers copy little ideas or m mimic similar ideas, but to really do everything to, to his level, you're gonna end up with a piano in this price range anyways. I just want to show just one more special feature of this piano. This one happens to be installed with something a little bit extra and I'll show you right now. Butterfly piano was designed to go in the Butterfly building, which is being currently built downtown at Nelson and Burrard. Oh my goodness. And uh, it was designed by the architect Bing, uh, Bing Tom, and uh, he also designed the, the piano, which is really cool. The people behind the project is called West, Ma West Bank Development, and they are the leading, one of the leading developers in the world. And uh, I like that I live in a world where pianos are designed for buildings. Yes, it's amazing. And uh, in, in the words of the, the founder of West Bank, he says that um, the, the buildings themselves are, are huge, but then this is a way for the architect to create something on a much smaller, more uh, human scale. He also makes the instruments available to, to play, so they're not like wow. off limits, nobody can touch them. The, they are meant uh, to be played. So you'll also see the 
Trellis Garden building downtown. It has a beautiful piano uh, designed by Gregory Enriquez, a, a, an award-winning architect here in Vancouver. And the, the shape of the legs mimics the support beams of, of the building, which is really cool. So who do I talk to about getting a unicorn piano designed? I'm your guy. I can make the unicorn piano. You heard it, folks. We are going to make a unicorn piano. <laughs> yes! But uh, we just really? need one of you lovely people out there to pay for it. Can you? Um, can we commission that? Just sending it out. Just uh, click on the link below to help pay for it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if I was nervous on the last one, I'm really nervous now. Okay, here we go. Okay, friends, so and this is it. I'm just gonna stay here for the rest of my life and play this piano. <laughs> but in all seriousness, this was the um, this was the castle of pianos, and I am absolutely blown away that I got to have the privilege of sitting here and playing it. Um, definitely something I never dreamed that I would do. So it's feeling really, really surreal. And as just like a little side, I wanted to say I got I was actually pretty nervous about coming here. I was like, I don't have I feel like I should be playing something really amazingly impressive and classical and then I was like, you know what? Wait a minute. I think I should just play something that I would want to play on any piano that I sat down on, which is why I was playing it around with your song. So I want this video to leave you encouraged. If you ever see a piano, as I like to say, out in the wild, go play it. <laughs> Okay, so that was it. That was our tour of these amazing luxury pianos, each and every one of them. Thank you so much for spending time with us and thank you, Manuel, for your time and your knowledge and the tour and for allowing us to be here to, to understand and play these beautiful instruments. Totally. I, we welcome any everyone to come and, and have, a, have a try. You know, like, we don't want people to feel like, oh, you know, oh, it's, I'll never buy something like that, it's too expensive. So we still want people to come and try it and experience it. And, you know, one thing that we often hear is people say like, oh, like, I, I don't want to buy a Fazioli so I can't go to that store. But we have a huge range of pianos here, even starting from like $1,000. So we do want people to feel welcome to come and try, even if they're not, you know, just to experience it, you know. Come because and have a coffee. Everybody should play the piano. Totally. She's right. 